Great day everyone, this is Jason Santos and for today, let us continue our discussion on environmental economics. We are already on our second topic, which is all about economics of pollution. Let's start this discussion with a quote from Carolyn Lucas. We have lived with deadly levels of air pollution for years, which have made us more vulnerable to the coronavirus. This is most certainly true. And um, we have seen okay, the effects of the pandemic and it has laid waste to a lot of people during the first year. Thanks to the rollout of the vaccination, the quick rollout, should I say, we are now living at um, a level zero uh, alert, which means that we can now freely move and um, we just need some protection through face mask but we most of us or majority of the population in the world have been covered with the vaccines and even booster shot in this uh, discussion we are going to see some of the effects of pollution in people as well as some byproducts in the form of externalities just to tackle a quick History from 1970 to 2012, the U.S. population increased by one third, and the size of the U.S. economy more than doubled since the 1970s. However, the United States, using a variety of anti-pollution policies, has made genuine progress against a number of pollutants. Table one lists the change in carbon dioxide emissions by users of energy, from residential to industrial. And according to U.S. Energy Information Administration, the table shows that emissions of certain key air pollutants declined substantially from 2007 to 2012. They dropped 730 million metric tons a year, a 12% reduction. And this seems to indicate that progress has been made in the United States in reducing overall carbon dioxide emissions, which cause greenhouse gases. Despite the gradual reduction in emissions from fossil fuels, many important environmental issues still remain. And along with the still high levels of air and water pollution, other issues include hazardous waste disposal, destruction of wetlands and other wildlife habitats, and the impact on human health from pollution. Private markets such as cell phone industry offer an efficient way to put buyers and sellers together and determine what goods and products are produced, how they are produced, and who gets them. The principle that voluntary exchange benefits both buyers and sellers is a fundamental building block of the economic way of thinking. But what happens when a voluntary exchange affects a third party who is neither the buyer nor the seller? To further explain this, let's have an example. Consider a concert producer who wants to build an outdoor arena that will host country music concerts a half mile from your neighborhood. You will be able to hear these outdoor concerts while sitting on the back of your porch or perhaps even in your dining room. In this case, the sellers and buyers of concert tickets may be both quite satisfied with their voluntary exchange, but you have no voice in their market transaction. The effect of a market exchange on a third party who is outside or external to the exchange is called an externality because externalities that occurs in market transactions affect other parties beyond those involved. They are sometimes called Spill over. In economics, an externality is an indirect cost or benefit to an uninvolved third party that arises as an effect of another party's activity. Externalities can be considered as unpriced goods involved in either consumer or producer market transactions. Air pollution from motor vehicles is one good example. Externalities can be negative or positive. If you hate country music, then having it waft into your house every night would be a negative externality. If you love country music, then what amounts to a series of free concerts would be a positive externality. To speak in vernacular, let's say nakatira ka malapit sa isang arena, okay, or an area where 
concerts are regularly held. For you, it kung mahilig ka sa music, it's going to be a positive externality. But then again, kung hindi ka mahilig sa music, gusto mo ng tahimik, ayaw mo ng ingay, it will be a negative externality for you. So, the bottom line here is that there are people who will be um, uninvolved indirectly in these situations. And we can put that in an economic scale or look at that in an economic scale. And that is what or how externalities works. Now, in relation to our topic, which is pollution economics, okay, pollution is actually a negative externality. Economists illustrate the social costs of production with a demand and supply diagram. The social costs include private costs of production incurred by the company and external costs of pollution that are passed on to society. Uh, the succeeding figure I will show would show the demand and supply for manufacturing refrigerators. The demand curve shows the quantity demanded at each price. The supply curve shows the quantity of refrigerators supplied by all the firms at each price if they are taking only their uh, private costs into account and they are allowed to emit pollution at zero cost. The market equilibrium where quantity supplied and quantity demanded are equal is at a price of $650 and a quantity of $45,000. This information is also reflected in the first three columns of Table 2. So let's look at this table and figure. Figure 1, taking social costs into account a supply ship. If the firm takes only its own cost of production into account, then its supply curve will be S private and the market equilibrium will occur at the economic cost. Accounting for additional external cost of $100 for every unit produced, the firm supply curve will be as social, and then the new equilibrium will occur at E1. So here is how the graph looks like. Identifying the equilibrium price and quantity involves several steps. The first one is to determine the negative externality in any situation. To do this, you must think about the situation described and consider all parties that might be impacted. A negative externality might be the increase in noise pollution in the area where the firm is playing. Step 2. Identify the equilibrium price and quantity when only private costs are taken into account. And then when social costs are taken into account, remember that equilibrium is where the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supplied. Step 3 is to look down at the columns to where the quantity demanded is equal to the quantity supply without paying the cost of the externality. Then. Refer to the first column out of that row to determine the equilibrium price. In this case, the equilibrium price and quantity when only private costs are taken into account would be at the price of $10 and a quantity of 5 Step 4 is to identify the equilibrium price and quantity when the additional external costs are taken into the account. Look down the columns of quantity demanded and the quantity supplied after paying the cost of the externality. Then, refer to the first column of that row to determine the equilibrium price. In this case, the equilibrium will be at a price of $12 and a quantity of 4 Finally, consider how taking the externality into account affects the equilibrium price and quantity. Do this by comparing the two equilibrium situations and if the firm is forced to pay its additional external cost, then production of trumpet songs becomes more costly and the supply curve will shift up. Remember that the supply curve is based on choices about production that firms make while looking at their marginal cost, while demand curve is based on the benefits that individuals perceive while making or maximizing utility. If no externalities existed, uh, private costs would be the same as the cost to society as a whole, and private benefits would be the same as the benefits to a society as a whole. 
Thus, if no externalities existed, the interaction of demand and supply will coordinate social costs and benefits. However, when the externality of pollution exists, the supply curve no longer represents all social costs because externalities represent a case where market no longer consider all social costs but only some of them. Economists commonly refer to the externalities as an example of market failure. When there is market failure, the pri private market fails to achieve efficient output because either firms do not account for all costs incurred in the production of output and our consumers do not account for all benefits obtained. In this case of pollution at the market output, social costs of production exceed social benefits to consumers, and the market produces too much of the product. We can see a general lesson here. If firms were required to pay the social cost of pollution, they would create less pollution but produce less of the product and charge for a higher price. In the next module, we will explore how governments require firms to take social cost of pollution into account. So to better understand this, let me uh, speak and discuss this final example in vernacular. Okay. So, kagaya na napag-aralan natin kanina, no, there was an example about a concert. Okay? Some people would benefit living in an area where a concert is held. Some people will not benefit from it. And from that, we can call it positive externality and negative externality. Ngayon, those things, okay, in that setting, there is an arrangement between the buyer and the seller. The buyer would be those who will attend the concert and the seller, of course, the organizer of the concert. Surrounding that area would be private, okay, private um, parties like yung residences, yung mga nakatira within that area. And sometimes in an economic transaction, the private parties are not taken into account, okay, when counting the social costs. And yun yung nagiging problem. Like uh, for this one, okay, we have a manufacturing plant na nagpo-produce ng cars. If you would look at it, it's positive because they are providing jobs in the area. Nagpo-produce sila ng cars, nagbibigay pa sila ng trabaho para sa mga nakatira sa syudad. Now, uh, the wealthy would buy uh, cars no, from these people or from these companies. It would create huge demands. It would create businesses within the area. Because, of course, when um, an area gets industrialized, okay, it becomes a, um, an avenue for free market. No? Doon magsusulputan ngayon yung iba-iba pang mga businesses that would drive um, alongside the car manufacturing plant. However, again, there will be private parties who we have not taken into account that would be um, paying for the cost as well like if this uh, manufacturing plant would produce tons and tons of toxic gases okay hindi natin ginusto yon hindi naman tayo kasali dun sa trans transaction of buying and selling the cars okay we are not the business owners hindi tayo customers but what but why are we pay, uh, play uh, paying no but why are we paying for the price okay now the increased pollution will result in the area suffering from a permanent haze, which is a negative externality. So, see, in this um, simple elaboration, ano, nakita natin merong mga tao na magbe-benefit from the transaction at meron namang hindi. No? And these things are called externalities. Now, bakit sila nasa loob ng economic pollution? Okay? I thought we were just talking about air pollution. The reality is not, ano, when you talk of economic pollution, maraming forms yan. Ano? It could come in different forms of wastes. Okay? Wherein the private parties would pay the collateral damage. Okay? Or take on the collateral damage. Like yan, no, air pollution from factories pollutions from fertilizers, industrial waste, noise pollution, yeah, no, uh, collapsing fish stock, okay? methane emissions. So wherever you go, no, if there will be businesses um, 
doing their regular transactions, we have to expand our vision and look at some other parties who might be affected. Okay? Uh, while it is a a good no economic activity kasi nakakatulong again siya sa pagdevelop ng isang city ng government okay meron at meron pa ring mga parties na matatamaan sa mga transaction na to and yun yung kailangan i-equate no or i-take into consideration by many companies and private companies when they are going to look at the supply, the demand, and the equilibrium. So that's about it. I hope you have understood this short lesson. And I'm going to give you this assignment in Microsoft Teams. So just kindly answer this and submit it in the given time. Thank you so much. Again, I hope you have learned something from this lesson. And I will see you on the next one.